Joy Taylor is our new guest booker on the show. She got Mario Cristobal on the show, the former Oregon coach, and Mario, the new coach of the Canes. You know, it's funny. You're the coach of Miami, and it you just look right in that shirt. You look like the coach of Miami. This is where you should be. But but I will say, you had built something special at Oregon. I mean, I, I covered them for years and years, Mario, and I think people think, oh, it's easy. You left friends. You left relationships. Were there nights in this transition that were not easy for you moving to Miami? Well, I don't think any move is ever easy, and uh, especially when your kids are are 10 and 12 and they have their friends and they've been playing on the same football teams and basketball teams. And, and really, you were just about to hit what's supposed to be your best years after, you know, your classes are not going to be juniors and seniors and maybe fifth-year guys. So it's difficult leaving situations like that, but – I played at Miami. I was born and raised in Miami. My entire existence has taken place uh, over here. And I, I think we all know how different and special Miami is when Miami is on. So this is the right choice for myself, my family. And, and I think I also owe it to this city and this community. Is building Oregon different than building Miami? Are there similarities or real differences? Like you don't have to leave the state as much. I know that to get players. I mean, there's always a similarity or some similarities, I should say, when you're building or rebuilding a program. When we arrived at Oregon, we were four and eight. OK, arriving over here, Miami's previous season was seven and five. Geographically, it's a whole different animal. Accessibility as well. And it's it's two different, again, uh, God, almost stratospheres because you're looking at public school versus private school. Um, really nice facilities. We're about to get nice facilities. Those are the similarities. But. The region, like you mentioned, there's a ton of football and population density on this side of the country uh, with football players is is amazing. And uh, access to that is something that is, well, let's just say there's a reason why the entire country comes out of this part to recruit and fill their rosters. You know, uh, I'm a big fan of the transfer portal, although I would for the integrity of college football's regular season. Labor Day to the end of the regular season, I don't think you should be able to transfer. By the way, there's a trade deadline in the NFL, so I'm for players moving and having power. Coaches do, administrators do. I think players should move. Just let's have some integrity. Also, I'm for the NIL. Uh, but again, I don't. I think you should have to be on a campus before you get paid, I don't want to be bidding for high school players. I think that's kind of gross. That's not what it was intended to be. But the NIL is freaking a lot of people out, and the transfer portal is. But I would argue you'll be able to build your program much faster with this transfer portal than maybe a Saban could at Alabama. He lost to Louisiana Monroe his first year. It took him like three years. So is there anything about the NIL, though? Because you're a great recruiter. Is there anything about it right now that worries you where you really think it needs guardrails? I mean, I wish we all knew more about it to talk about what it really needs, right? Um, I mean, we're in a great situation because Miami is a city that's ascending, right? University of Miami and our program is also ascending. Um, there's a lot of unknowns. It's caused a lot of friction, uncertainty, but it's also created a lot of opportunities. So what's that next step? What are the answers? Well, I think everybody wants to know. Everybody wants to maximize its potential. Um, and there's uh, the fear of the unknown of what what are the ramific of ramifications? What comes with this that we haven't experienced yet? So I, uh, I'm i all for it. Like you, I think the transfer portal is a good thing. I think uh, that, that deadlines and, and the requirements are important as it relates to coaches as well. You know, when guys can move on and when they are you know, required to stay past a certain date. So uh, there's a lot of answers we don't have yet, but I was hoping you would have them on this show. <laughs> you know, Mario, there, um, there are, and I've said this for years, that when t it's not just that you win in Los Angeles. The, the great Laker teams have also been a little, they've been showtime. They've had a glamour to him. This is a very distracted market. Beaches, mountains, multiple pro teams. You, you got to have a little flair here. Sean McVay, Stafford. Los Angeles just isn't about winning. It's how you win. Miami feels that way to me, is that I like how the Dolphins have pivoted to an offensive franchise. They were with Marino. He rarely had a great defense. I feel like the Miami Hurricanes, to win, to really sell the program, I, I think a little flash is fun. They feel like that as a program. I miss, I miss as a fan, 
the Miami Hurricane swagger. I really do. I think it's your brand. How do you balance that? Some of that high end glamour and fun with the fact that that maybe not, maybe that's not your personality. I mean, you're looking at a guy that walked into a locker room with, I see a couple of my former teammates bouncing around today with uh, guys like Michael Irvin and Alonzo Highsmith and the Randall Thrill Hills of the world that, you know, ran up the tunnel at the Cotton Bowl up against the University of Texas. It's, um, you know, the energy and passion at the University of Miami. It was never about the facilities here. I right. mean, I hope people recognize that, right? Remember, it was all about a brotherhood. People yep. always wondered, why does Miami have so many people on the sideline? Why is your sideline littered with NFL pro bowlers at every single game, every possible occasion? Why? Because it was almost like uh, we took it personal, personally, that everyone else had so much of this, these nice facilities and these, these unbelievable amenities, and we didn't. So we we're going to make up for that with hunger and drive and determination and go out and kick some butt. So that's part of it. Uh, the second part is now we're getting those facilities. Now the resources are in place. So I think that's a great combination. You know, so how do you balance that? I think Jimmy Johnson was the master of that. He knew how to instill discipline, how to instill toughness and physicality, but at the same time, let the guys play, right? When it came down to kicking the ball off, he let them cut it loose. Yeah. And they cut it loose with discipline and they played at a really high level and set, you know, made history. Yeah. So I want to ask you about uh, a couple of players because you and Nick Saban are the only active head coaches in college football with a top 10 pick in three straight drafts. So you develop talent, you evaluate it at a high level. That's it. You and Nick, that's it. Um, I want to ask you about Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, Obviously, he's an electric, dynamic player. Some have said he doesn't have the Chase Young presence. What what what's the selling point? If you had, how did you use him, and how do you think he'll be as an NFL player? How would he be most effective as a pro? Well, I think he saw himself in the Coliseum a couple of times, right? I mean, he he was outstanding as a competitor, as a worker, and as a teammate. And everyone knew he was a natural pass rusher. I mean, you you have to have explosiveness, a quick first step, learning how to play with leverage, natural power. He has that. His ability to dissect offensive tackles or sets, understand the game itself. Like, when are you to the short side, the zone side? When do you have the man side? When's a guy short setting you? When's he deep setting you? When's he soft setting you? He understands the use of hands technique. And you know what? You combine all that with the fact that he knows and takes pride in playing the run, and you have yourself a complete player who has only played three years of college ball, and in reality, only two and a half because – the pandemic year, right? You only play what six, seven games, and his uh, his last year at Oregon due to his injury only played five or six games. His best football is ahead of him. He's going to be a superstar. Uh, your quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke, is is I saw him play two or three times last year. He's obviously an NFL quarterback. Where can he get better? Where can you take him? He, he is an incredible. I mean, an exceptional leader. Uh, he's a relentless pursuit of excellence guy and his decision making is on point his accuracy um his arm strength um he understands protections the run game he is a complete player he really is and he's very mobile his pocket presence is off the charts he understands defense as well as anybody i've been around he's he reminds me a lot of what we had at oregon and justin herbert yeah a few years back and um, again he only played i believe in seven eight games last year and you saw how, how Miami's offense just really took a, a huge upturn, you know, uptick when he was in there. So uh, we think he's going to be one of the best players in the country right now. He's done a great job in the offseason with our team. Uh, certainly in spring practice, he was off the charts as a competitor and as a leader. So big things expected of Tyler Van Dyke. Did you know when you watch Herbert now, uh, you obviously knew he was talented. I, Joy and I had said there was a lot of doubts about him. And we, we watched the Rose Bowl, because I watched a lot of Oregon games because I covered them. And I, I, we watched the Rose Bowl, and that Wisconsin defense was good. And he made, the, he made linebackers in open field miss completely. I'm like, I, we don't get the questions. When was the moment with Justin you were like, wow, this kid is, because is, you had him, you saw all the growth. Oh, upon arrival. I mean, actually on the way there on the iPad, just watching him and watching the arm talent and then getting to know him. You know, over at uh, through our time at Oregon and watching him at practice, some of the things he would do was incredible. And a team that was growing. I think people don't give him enough credit for taking the reins of a team that was starting to rebuild, a team that had been four and eight. And then two years later, you're 12 and two, you win the conference and you win the Rose Bowl while the pieces are still coming along. 
while throwing for whatever he threw for 34, 3,500 yards and 29 plus touchdowns, very little interceptions. This guy, he showed it. Uh, we really, really pr- impressed upon every team that came around. Uh, he's the best we've ever been around. And uh, the right team picked him for the right system with the right coach, the right players. And sky's the limit, man. He's just getting started. So I always thought Jason Taylor, Joy's brother, was one of the nicest guys uh, I ever work with. I mean, I always thought if I was that good looking, I'd be so obnoxious. <laughs> and yet he's like, I mean, still literally the guy like is a Neutrogena commercial. He's the best looking human ever. And he was like the nicest guy. And I was always like, and he's just really a decent guy. So you brought him on the staff. And Joy here's uh, blushing, of course. And Joy is one of the nicest people I've ever worked with. But um, I, I love the fact that you're, and this is this is what Pete Carroll did at USC. He brought the family back. He brought everybody back. And uh, tell me a little bit about Jason Taylor because I know what a what a good dude he is. Joy obviously does. And just what he yeah. brings what he brings to the program and what kind of guy he is. Yeah, you're right. You know, we were going to have a, a women's coaching clinic. We had to cancel due to just overflow of applications. <laughs> People wanted to come see Jason Taylor. So uh, the, the best way to describe Jason Taylor and everyone in the building will echo this is I've never seen a guy that who wears a gold jacket really has nothing to prove, has done it all up until this point in his life. But yet he shows up every single day as if he has everything to prove. Uh, he, I was blown away and everyone is by the fact that he's even – a better person than he was a player. And that's hard to imagine. Just the ability to connect, communicate, inspire, teach, unbelievable knowledge. I mean, his impact has been felt immediately by everyone in the building. Um, he just, people gravitate to him. And he is, uh, he's, he's a special, special human being. Finally, you know, I was going to, I was thinking about this. So you won coach of the year in the Pac-12 in 2019, obviously had great success. But I, I, I hear coaches sometimes you know, coaches move in their second job and third job, and they, you know, um, they learn things. If I said Mario Cristobal today is coaching against Mario Cristobal first year at Oregon, where have you made the biggest leap that Miami will benefit from? Where have you made your big leap as a coach? You know, I, I think the things that Jimmy Johnson, um, I'll even go further back, Dennis LaVell, my high school coach, the stuff that he reinforced back then, was reinforced here at the University of Miami, was reinforced coaching for Nick Saban at Alabama, was that at the heart of all of it, it's connection and relationships. Combined with intensity and passion, you know, and we we pour uh, an insane amount of time with this stuff. And as years go on, anytime you stray from those principles and values that you know are true to being successful and winning, not only on the field, but in developing these young men for that next step in life. We are their last pit stop, right? After this, it's the real world. Yeah. Tough job market, relentless, right? Unforgiving economy. Um, to never, ever stray from those principles and values. And when you, if you could coach against yourself, and if I could coach against myself, I'd always say, don't ever, ever, ever stray from the principles of emphasizing discipline, physicality, culture, relentless effort because with those things if you stick to those principles you emphasize those things and you make sure that how you do anything is how you do everything and that is your culture always to every single person in the building you're gonna do well mario cristobal well joy uh listen she's gonna get real obnoxious if you guys start winning 10 11 (laughs) games i'm gonna have a lot to deal with mario i'll tell you that right now but i am i love i've said it multiple times the sport needs Miami. They feel different than every other program. Uh, they are just polarizing and fun and full of personality. And I appreciate you taking time. I wish you the best of luck. You're not going to need luck because you're going to get good real fast. And thanks. I really appreciate you stopping by. Appreciate you, Joy. Thank you very much for having me. Go Canes. It's going to be so much fun. It really is. They are one of those things. We've said this. Yankees, Yankees wins better for baseball. It's just good. Cubs win, I think, is better for baseball. You don't have to win World Series, but be viable. I think when the Raiders win, they're a fun brand. Miami football, it gets the East Coast. So many people in Miami are from New York. Yeah. They're from Philly. So you get the Northeast crowd. A lot of them, you'd be amazed how many people that go to Miami 
are from New York. You kind of get New York. <laughs> no, Miami would, Miami would definitely tell you. There's more New Yorkers there now than ever. So when the Canes are good, you'll see New York TV ratings for college football go up. Yeah. New, we need New York to care a little bit about college football. A little. They're not gonna, they'll are not going to. they always love the Mets and the NFL and the Yankees. But when Miami's rolling, New York is engaged on the sport a little bit. And that's important. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.